Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. <coughs> A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, the prophet shall die. The word of the Lord.
Please join me in praying Psalm 111, responsibly, I ask verse. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor. And his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works. In giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. Because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, We know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience became weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. The psalmist said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Please be seated. (coughs) Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but what is that? What is fear of the Lord? I did a cursory review, and there are a few books in the Bible that discuss fear of the Lord. I'll name them. Ready? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Joshua, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Nehemiah, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Jonah, Zephaniah, Malachi, Luke, Acts, 2nd Corinthians, Philippians, Hebrews, 1st Peter, and Revelation. Here ends the sermon. (laughs) There are over 300 references in those 27 books of the Bible to the fear of the Lord. And so my question for us to entertain this morning is, what does it mean, fear of the Lord? We speak of God many times, especially seemingly as we close in on this next season called Lent, as a consuming fire, a judge, a judge who cannot abide sin nor a sinner. There are those who teach and believe that that is what Lent is all about. Hell, fire, damnation, the judge. God is going to punish you and exact retribution and vengeance upon you. Now that ought to give you some warm fuzzies because Lent is just around the corner. Fear the Lord? You bet. When I think of God in those terms, it makes me want to go hide in a closet. So what does fear of the Lord mean? And at first glance, it can be quite confusing. I mean, there's all those references to fear the Lord. And yet, we get to the first epistle of St. John, and in the fourth chapter, we read several verses. One says, God is love. And another says, Perfect love casts out fear. So if God is love and perfect love casts out fear, how can we fear a God who is love? Because if we come into God's presence with fear, he's going to cast us out because perfect love casts out fear and God is love. Quite the conundrum. The last thing that we should fear is fearing God in a relationship. 
So back to our question, what does fear mean? And I would suggest to you that the fear spoken of here, especially in the first epistle of St. John, is the encouragement to not feel rejected. You do not have to fear rejection. St. John is telling us to be at peace. Be secure in God's acceptance of you. You are the apple of God's eye, and he can't stop loving you. He holds you in the palm of his hand. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. God loves you, and there's no reason to ever fear rejection. In Philippians, we read that we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling, with fear and trembling. One pastor says this about that passage. He said, just think about it. The awesome presence of God is in our lives. God is working for us, not against us. He's working in our lives to build faith, to restore hope, to shape us into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, to keep us and to love us. And the reality of that truth should leave us trembling. Not trembling with the idea that God is out to get us, but the reality that God is working intimately in each of our lives. You see, Lent is not about, and I know we're not in Lent yet, but we're getting there. Lent is not about God exacting revenge or punishment or vengeance. Lent is a season that is all about love. It's a season of God loving us so much that the Son gives his life for our redemption. That's love. In Proverbs and Isaiah, among other places, we learn that the fear of the Lord means to have a humble heart, to remain humble before God. Humble comes from the Latin because many words come from the Latin, and I can't speak Latin, but I'll give you my what do they call pigs Latin or something like that? Ipsa and all that. Humble comes from the Latin humilis or humus, meaning earth. Humility or being humble means we remember where we would be without God. And the words of Ash Wednesday echo in my mind when I hear the word humble. You'll remember them. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And without God, we would be nothing but dust. And so we remain humble before our Creator. Now listen to what Isaiah says in chapter 11, and I quote, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Do you remember who Isaiah is talking about? Remember who he's speaking of? He is speaking prophetically about someone who has these different gifts, most especially has the fear of the Lord. Isaiah is prophesying about the Messiah. He is speaking about Jesus. Jesus had the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not a bad thing. It's not like a servant who cowers in expectation of a beating from the master who is exacting punishment and vengeance and retribution. The fear of the Lord is a good thing. It is an understanding that God loves you and God accepts you. Fear of the Lord is, is the knowledge that the Holy Spirit abides within you to keep you and to change you into the image and likeness of Jesus. The fear of the Lord is about humility before God, humility in our relationship with our Creator. Romans chapter 11 tells us this, to stand fast through faith. Don't be proud, be humble. 
Fear the Lord. Don't let yourself run or wander from God because God will pursue you. The fear of the Lord is the opposite of presumption, the opposite of pride, the opposite of self-sufficiency. The fear of the Lord keeps us from drifting away or walking away or running away from God, the God who will never leave us nor forsake us. I close with this story. It's about a, a, a family, parents, mom and dad, and their little girl named Sally, and as I said at the 8 o'clock, no relationship to our Sally. They arrive at, their ho- at the home of their friends, and the friends have a dog, and the breed is a bull mastiff. Has anybody ever had or seen a bull mastiff? I had one when I was a little boy. The bull mastiff is a huge, muscular, powerful dog. Ours weighed about 135 pounds. I was cleaning my dad's golf bag one time and a golf ball bounced across the garage floor and Buck, our bull mastiff, grabbed it. He didn't chew on it. He just bit down and split the thing wide open. That was back in the days when they made golf balls with rubber bands in the middle and all of a sudden the rubber bands are flying all over. His jaws were incredibly powerful. I'd hate to think what would happen if it came down on an arm. They were bred in England to protect the manors and the estates. All you had to do was walk them around the perimeter of your property one time, and that became their land. There was no fence needed. They never crossed that line, and they protected everything inside of it. And again, did I say they were huge? Our dog, mine, when I was a little boy, had a 32-inch choke chain around its neck. And it didn't hang loosely. It was pretty snug. A big boy. Well, back to my story. The parents and Sally arrived at their family's, at their friend's house, and they knock on the door. When the door opens, there's their friend, and there is Shep, all 140 pounds, looking eyeball to eyeball at little Sally. And as they're greeting one another, Sally suddenly realizes that she forgot her favorite doll out in the car, and she runs back to get the doll. And Shep, doing what Shep does on his property, lopes along behind her and starts barking. And folks, I'm here to tell you that when a full-grown bull mastiff is behind you and running and barking, it scares the dickens out of you. And the parents... They were scared. They were scared to death that that big dog was going to eat their little girl. Thinking the bull master was out to attack her or punish her or exact some sort of vengeance upon her. But the friend calls out to the little girl and says, Sally, Sally, don't run away. Shep doesn't like it when people run. Just walk. Walk with him and he'll walk with you and protect you. He won't let you get lost. You never have to be afraid, Sally, when Shep is walking with you. And so, Sally slowed down to a walk, and Shep came up right next to her and walked alongside of her all the way out to the car and waited for her, and then walked all the way back to the house right next to Sally. What a sight it was. Little Sally and Big Shep walking right next to each other. And folks, there was nothing and no one that was going to mess with Sally while she walked with Shep at her side. That's a picture of the fear of the Lord. Coming to the realization that God loves you and accepts you and doesn't want you to drift away or walk away or run away, won't let you get lost, will never leave you alone, will always be there to protect you, and so... May we rest in the comfort that God is holding us in the palm of his hand and will never let any of us go. Again, you are the apple of God's eye and he can't stop loving you. God loves you and there's no reason to ever fear rejection. My brothers and sisters, this is the fear of the Lord. And it is the beginning of wisdom. (coughs) Amen.
standing as able, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another as a sign of peace. Good morning. You may be seated. It is wonderful to see everyone this morning. Welcome. If you are visiting for the first time, we're glad you're here. Uh, if you get a chance, please introduce yourself to either myself or Deacon Sally or Deacon Pam or Father Eric. We would love to meet you. You can also fill out an information card that's in the back of the pew in front of you. Um, if you are a board chair or on the vestry, will you please stand? These are excellent.
excellent people to talk to. If you have questions or want to learn more about the visioning and direction of our various ministries at St. Philip's, thank you. Please be seated. There's not a lot happening this week. It's a little bit quieter of a week. It's worth noting next Sunday is one of the men's breakfasts between services, so come a little earlier so you can get some really, really, really good breakfast food. Um, that also means adult form will not meet next Sunday. It'll meet again the following Sunday. And Deacon Pam, did you have an announcement? Yes. Uh, this coming Saturday, February 3rd, the Daughters of the King are hosting a quiet day retreat. Uh, it's open to everyone, um, men and women. We will be discussing uh, the value of silence in listening to God and how to maybe ease into contemplative prayer and a few things along those lines. So we'd love to have you join us. We're beginning at 9.30 in the parish hall with coffee, and then we will start the program here at 10 in the sanctuary and end with Eucharist and lunch. So if you'd like to join us, please, you're very, very welcome. Thank you. And since Father Eric already mentioned Ash Wednesday, I'll make sure it's on your calendar now. Good news. Those of you planning some romantic Valentine's Day dinner, you don't have to this year. Instead, you come here 5 p.m. It's Ash Wednesday. February 14th is Ash Wednesday. We will have a 12 noon service and a 5 p.m. service. And of course, you are all welcome to either service. Anything else? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate for the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error, into truth, out of sin, into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Philip and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be priests. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.